Hey guys, welcome back to another Revit exercise where we're building this Capstone 2.1 project from AutoCAD in Revit. We're referencing these AutoCAD drawings that are provided in every video in the link. So let's go ahead and get started. So, so far we have finished out the roof of the actual cabin. That's what we did in the last exercise. And primarily this video, I wanna focus on the foundation. Because if we finish out the foundation, we will pretty much finish out all of the enclosure of the actual building. So we'll be ready for rough ins, MEP, and such. So as I was doing in AutoCAD drawing, I'm going to be looking at what am I looking at in terms of details. So one of the first things that stands out to me is there's an anchor bolt to the sole plate that ties it to the slab. Now my grade is about 6 inches. By code, it should be at least 6 inch minimum, but 8 inches recommended. The slab is three and a half inches here. The sole plate also lines up with the edge of the slab, not with the actual wall because our sheathing and siding goes beyond this. So they're gonna create a lip here. And we're gonna look at that detail in drafting views. Um, another thing is we're looking at our grade beam layout, how this is being done. Our grade beams are also around 10 inches all the way around. And I think it's like that for almost every location, if I'm not mistaken, minus that weird 11 inch dimension that we got. But it's 10 inch all the way around with a four inch or three and a half inch minimum as indicated here for the slab. So let's go back to our Revit file and get started. The first thing we're gonna do is under our project browser, we're gonna open our first floor. So under our first floor, what we're gonna be doing is going under the architectural tab, build panel, and we're gonna select floor. Now there's multiple ways to model this. I'm gonna select a concrete four inch slab as it comes preloaded with this file. Now you can go far as to mention it as three and a half inches, but that's the minimum. So we're gonna stick with four. I'm gonna use DI first using the tab Key, I'm looking at what is the offset from the exterior finish of the wall to the stud of the actual wall or the core structure of the wall. And that's one and a quarter inch, so 1.25 inches. I'm gonna hit escape. So as I'm drawing this slab, I'm gonna go ahead and select the line tool here. I can do pick walls, but line tools will work best in this situation. And then my offset here should be 1.25. 1.25 inches and I'm going to click off chain should be checked on and then when I start drawing it as I'm drawing it the first one's going to have an extra two dashes that span direction we'll talk about it right after we finish drawing it but by hitting the space bar I can switch which side the offset is so I'm going to make sure the offsets on the inside face lining up with the structure and let's go ahead and start going around the perimeter. Now, I particularly model my foundation different from what you might have been getting used to. Ideally, we should be going under the structural tab and then from there, model our foundation for construction. But again, that is a structural engineering requirement it allows you to have rebar spacing. You can indicate a lot of things inside these foundations. You can even go as far as to calculate the cubic volume of the concrete needed based on the slab or the concrete that you have drawn. Add a 10% margin and you can actually calculate your material. But as we finish out our foundation, I'm just verifying everything is lining up with the stud and then I hit the check icon. Now, ideally, its constraint is level, is first floor. The floor always draw down from the level that you created. So when you hit the check icon and I go under my elevation, under my project browser, let's go ahead and select West Elevation. As you can see, my slab, foreign slab is here and my finish grade is negative one six which should be the bottom of footing. And this is our first floor. The grade is only eight inches away. Look at our AutoCAD file again. If we are looking at it, 
The grade is technically six inches away. That's where the soil stops. Our foundation or the bottom of footing, let's suppose, or the bottom of grade beam is right there. So as a slab on grade, I'm going to go back to my Revit file, and instead of calling it finished grade, let's call it what it is. Call it bottom of footing. Say yes to corresponding views, so all the views have been changed. Now, I am going to say here, that's our first floor still. I'm going to copy this level down, and this is where I'm going to be slightly different from any co-authors that you have seen. And the reason being, whenever I model complex slabs or complex foundations, I tend to model it, and I'm using the cut line here to actually split apart my actual writing so I can see the notations. And I probably have to do this in every view, but for now, first floor is zero, zero. This is not level 10. We're gonna call this level or top of grade beam, and we're gonna call this bottom of grade beam and slide these a little bit over. Bottom of grade beam. Now that we have this drawn out, so the way I like to look at my footing is I like to look at it as a wall that's going from here to the top of grade beam. Now, ideally, you want to go under the structural tab, click on foundation, and select walls. And then add your footing walls here, and therefore you can actually pick the toe, nail, how much of the wall actually sticks out beyond the wall. But for complex issues or for more precise control, it is better to model it as walls. Treat your bottom of grade beam layer as an independent floor by itself with walls that support the foundation, which then support the house. It makes it easier to visualize it that way. Then I'm going to go ahead and go to the bottom of grade beam floor. When I go there, one of the first thing I look at is under my properties, I'm going to make sure that my underlay is on and I'm using the underlay as the base level of first floor. If you have this turned off, it will indicate there's no floor there. There's nothing being cut through. But we want to see the actual first floor on the actual plan because we're going to draw a grade beam based on that. So I know we have a great beam here, 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 and all around, and then they're all 10 inch in size. Now, after we have set that, what we're going to be looking at of this view is what is our visibility and graphics? What, what are we looking at in terms of view range? So one of the things that is by default is your primary range of where you cut and how far you can look down. So from the associated level, a bottom of grade beam, so as you're associating the level, that's the actual top, right? From here, where's the cut plane? So the cut plane can be at zero, zero. I like to put it at one feet. But since we're going from the bottom of grade beam, let's put it at five inches. So five inches above the actual bottom of plate, which is bottom of top plate right here. We're going to be cutting at the cut plane of five inches. The reason being grade beams are so small, you won't be able to see them unless you actually set the view range. Then what should the bottom be? How far down do you want to see? So that's the actual range to where you're going to see. So from the cut plane of five inches, now the bottom is saying negative 10 feet. We can say the bottom is at all the way down to negative one feet. Then the view depth is how far down you want to continue to see, how much farther down you want to see. We can set this as infinite or unlimited because at this time, we we're pretty much have nothing underneath this level. So again, as I'm setting this, I'm going to hit apply. The top clip plane is set below the cup plane. So the top, oh, is the level above. So we're gonna associate it to the level above being first floor, and I'm gonna hit apply, press okay. So that's that. So again, 
the level above the top of grade beam is first floor. We're going to start from the bottom of grade beam and we're going to indicate that we're going to go to the top of grade beam layer. So let's go ahead and go under bottom of grade beam plan and start drawing these walls. Now, as we go back to our AutoCAD drawing, we know our grade beams are 10 inch all the way around, but you also have to keep in mind that they're aligning with the sole plate. So we're going to go ahead and indicate that on our Revit model. Under the architectural tab, we're going to go into the build panel, select wall or WA, and the wall I'm going to select is the foundation 10 inch concrete wall. The base constraint is going to be the bottom of grade beam. And then from here, I'm going to scroll down and the top constraint is going to be at the top of grade beam. I'm going to make sure that that's my unconnected height. And for some odd reason, it's refusing to cooperate. So what I'm going to do is instead, I'm going to make the base constraint to the top of grade beam. And then I'm going to go down as a negative offset. So I'm going to offset negative one feet, two inches. which will allow us to have a wall and then I'm going to unconstraint. I'm going to take away the top constraint as unconnected. So therefore the wall itself doesn't have a top constraint. It does have a base offset and the unconnected height of one foot two. Now that I have that, I have pretty much going from the top of grade beam for some odd reason, I have to go down negative one feet, two inches, and then unconnected height, I'm going back up one foot two. With, for some odd reason, Revit is not cooperating with me, but hey, it's still going to work out because at the end of the day, we're gonna sp spam all these grade beams all the way around and get this project to look perfect. So as I'm drawing these grade beams, I'm keeping in mind that I am not touching the absolute edge, keeping a small void there. Following the edges of the wall or the foundation. Here. And the only reason we can see this grade beam is because we set our cut layer on these grade beams to be at negative five inches. Now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and draw a grade beam across here. Using the space bar, I'm switching its side, and therefore, this wall connects this way. There's an additional foundation wall here. It goes all the way across, like so. And I think one more that goes across from here to there. Seems a little excessive, but hey, it finishes out. Using the Align tool, AL, I'm gonna Align tab, align my grade beams there. Now that I have this modeled, I'm gonna look at my 3D. As you can see, these walls are at a whole different plane. I'm going to make sure that they are modeled at the same plane as that. Let's go ahead and indicate them to be from the same plane. I'm going to go back and look at these two beams together. So location line, base constraint is from the top of grade beam and that should move them into plane. So all I have to do is make sure the base constraint is top of grade beam then do a negative one foot two inch base offset. And then from there, I'm having an unconnected height of one foot two. So from negative one foot two, I'm drawing back up one foot two. Now that I have all my grade beams in place, now let's go ahead and solidify some locations. As is indicated here on the foundation plan, that is three feet nine and a half inches to the center of this grade beam. So let's go ahead and indicate that. Going under my Revit model again, going to the bottom of grade beam layer. From DI, I'm gonna tab select from the edge of the wall here. 
or is it edge of the foundation? It's the edge of the foundation. It's three, and a, uh, three feet, nine and a half inches. We're gonna do exactly that. So the slab is right here to the center of the beam. That should be three foot, nine and a half. Hey, it actually lines up with a wall. And then from here, I think I am missing a couple more grade beams here. So wall, making sure my top constraint is top of grade beam, negative one foot two. Unconnected height, top constraint, unconnected. Unconnected height of one foot dash two inches. Finish face exterior. Draw from here. Join to this wall. Draw from here. Join into this wall. And draw from here. Drawing into this wall. And these three walls, base constraints, top of grade beam, unconnected, going down negative one foot two, then going back up one foot two inches. Now that we have our grade beams in, I can look at my 3D model. As you can see, I have all my grade beams drawn, all of them connected. If we wanted to, we can connect this grade beam all the way across. Let's go back to our bottom of grade beam plan, indicating this wall to be connected here. And there you have it. You have all your grade beams drawn for the slab. We go back to our first floor plan. And over here, we're going to go ahead and build a deck. Now, I would build a deck in two different ways. There's actually three ways to do it. But the simplest way to do it, again, for exposure, is architectural tab, build panel, select floors. Now, over here, we're going to go ahead and select it as a wood joist floor with 10 inch with a wood finish on top. I'm going to select that floor. The constraint is still first floor, but the height offset from the actual level, set it down negative 1.5 inches, which would mean that there is a step down of at least one and a half inches when you walk out. This allows for a threshold to occur where the actual floor meets the foundation. I'm gonna hit apply there, and we're gonna simply draw this square out. I'm gonna go ahead and indicate a rectangle, and I'm gonna go ahead and draw this floor across this way. Now, in this particular circumstance, I would seriously consider the actual beam direction to be the short way. So I'm going to change span direction by clicking on span direction and making it this way, the shorter distance. And lastly, I'm going to go ahead and use AL to align deck to the actual edge of the foundation wall, which is here. And therefore, I have this lip that's one and a half inches. And then I am actually going far in to the actual foundation to actually indicate where this is going to end. I'm going to hit the check icon. It is going down from first floor. So that's how it would look. And this is how the actual decking would span. If you look at it in 3D, this is right there. I'm going to spin around. Obviously, the 4x4 four four details and all of that would be indicated in details but I just put oak wood flooring here. So as you can see, this is how the actual foundation is having a dialogue with the deck. Next, we're gonna go ahead and indicate having a stair here. So we're gonna draw the stairs out, architectural tab. First, I'm gonna to switch to the first floor plan and under here, architectural tab, circulations, we're gonna select stairs. Now. We have multiple choice for our stairs. We're gonna go ahead and select something that has an open riser because these are outside stairs. The width is going to be 12 feet because that's how far it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and indicate the width to be 12 feet. Now, the base level we're going from is the bottom of grade beam. Go to first floor. We can do first floor. Base offset. I can do a top offset of negative 1.5 inches because our deck is 1.5 inches down. And then 
it will calculate for me the desired number of risers, the actual risers height, which is five, five and a half inches, which works because I'm assuming it gets too large if you go any further. I'm going to go ahead and draw out the stairs. Simply click and drag up. This goes from first riser to the third riser. I can use the align tool or I can use move to actually indicate where this is going. I'm going to use MV move or under the modify tab, I can go under the move mod under modify panel, select move. I'm going to select the stair, press enter and move the stairs back, indicating it to be connected there. Now I don't have rails because it's only a one foot six inch drop, but you can always add rails to it. I hit check, it would automatically populate a rail across. If I hit 3D, you can see how the rails come up to the actual floor decking. And then we should have rails that go across here. We can do that by going under our first floor plan again, under the architectural tab, select railing. And then we will probably have to do an offset, but since we already have rectangular railing selected, we're just simply going to have railing along one side here and I'm going to hit the check icon. The way, one way I do rails is actually looking at the distance between the rails. Since this is a one and a half inch, I'm assuming, so it's a two inch rail, what I can do is, it's at the midpoint, I can simply just move it over one inches. So I'm going to simply select the rail, edit path, select this, and we can indicate the distance that I'm moving over. So DI, I can distance it this way and I can simply select it and move it where this is exactly one inch. So it's a distance of one inch from here to there. When I hit delete on this actual dimension, I can hit the check icon. Now I have my rail that lines up with the rail of the stairs. If I go into my 3D, there's multiple things that I can do that are far advanced to actually make this work. But as far as the floor is concerned, this building is nearly complete. And that concludes this exercise. Follow for more content.